What's going on guys? Today we're going to go over a complicated function interpretation question, which is going to be number 25 from section 4, which is supposedly a tough question given that it's one of the last few questions. However, it's actually a really simple question that you can solve without a calculator or even doing any math on paper. So as always, I will show you the quick way to get the answer without doing any work and then explain the reasonings behind it so you can understand it and use it on your future exams. What's up guys, John from Admission Hackers. Quick announcement before we start. You're about to see one of the fastest ways to solve these SAT questions. And I have created a six week program that will train you to solve them the exact same way. Everything is in the video format, so it's easier to follow than your SAT prep books. And the program only covers what's proven to be tested on the SAT to not waste your time and raise your score quickly. Also, I'll be mentoring you personally until you get your target score, but more details in the description box down below. That's it. Let's get to the video. All right, let's go over the question. It gives us this function right there. And the function G above models what the growth rate of a certain plant in millimeters per day in terms of the watering time T in minutes per day. What's the meaning of 5.51 comma G of 5.51 in this context, okay? So 5.51 is referring to the watering time, G of 5.51, that's the growth rate. So it's going to be G of T. And so that results in that, which means A could work, B wouldn't work, C, yeah, D wouldn't work. So answer is going to be choice A. Now let's go over exactly what happened in the past 10 seconds. The only thing you need to solve this question quickly is the understanding of these coordinates right there. So let's write it right here, 5.51 comma G of 5.51. And when it comes to a coordinate, we know that, okay, the first one is going to be the X, second one is going to be the Y. And we know that X is referring to the input of the function and Y is going to be the output of the function. For example, when you have a function that looks like y is equal to 2x, when you plug in 1, you're going to get y is equal to 2, right? And that coordinate will look like 1, 2, which is x, y, which is the input, and y is the output. So the first number is referring to the input, second number is referring to the output. But in terms of this context, what does the input refer to? It's referring to t, right? And what does t refer to? It's referring to the watering time. So your input is going to be the watering time. And what does your output represent? Well, your output is going to be your y value and your y value is going to be g of t because we can either say g of t is equal to this or y is equal to this. So y and g of t, they're essentially the same thing. And what does the y value or the g represent? It represents the growth rate, which means your output is going to be represented as growth rate. And what's important here is for you to understand this relationship right there, input, output, this is what is causing this to happen. And in this context, that means watering time is causing the growth rate, right? And all we have to do now is put it together. When your watering time is 5.51, your resulting growth rate is going to be G of 5.51. And the only choice that correctly says that is going to be choice B. When the watering time is 5.51, the resulting growth rate is going to be G of 5.51, just like we said right there. They're the same thing. So A is going to be the answer. And choice B is going to be wrong because the units have been flipped. And when it comes to choice C and D, it's a little bit more nuanced, but let's go over it. Choice C says the watering time increases by this much for every 5.51 millimeters, blah, blah, blah. Choice D essentially says the same thing, right? And what makes it wrong is the word every right there. Every is referring to a linear relationship, which means your graph is going to look something like that. For example, if you're eating two cookies for every one second, then if you were to visualize this, it would look like that graph right there, which is in the shape of a line. And lines always have a equation of y is equal to mx plus b form. And when you look at our equation, it has this two as an exponent, which means it's going to be a parabola shaped, not a line shaped. So any choices that refer to a linear relationship is going to be out, choice C and D are both out. So when you have a strong understanding of the concepts, you're going to be able to do this process quickly and realize that A is going to be the answer. If you can do this process in just one minute, you're on the same level as perfect scoring students. And to do that, you're going to need a strong understanding, strong foundation on the concepts. And specifically for this question, this question was testing you on the concept of functions. Most people just end up memorizing X as X and Y as Y, but you have to go a step further and understand that X and Y represent the relationship of a input and the output. And that's what allows you to read in between the lines when you see an expression like this and recognize that, oh, it's referring to this relationship right there. So the main takeaway is to focus on understanding the concepts. So that's going to be it for this video, guys. Consider subscribing if you found this video helpful, and I'll see you on the next one.
What's up guys, John from Admission Hackers. You just saw one of the fastest way to solve these SAT questions. And I have created a six week program that will train you to solve them the exact same way. Everything is in the video format, so it's easier to follow than your SAT prep books. And the program covers only what is proven to be tested on the SAT to not waste your time and raise your score quickly. And I'll be mentoring you personally until you get your target score, but more details in the description box down below. That's it, I'll see you in the next one.